so welcome students uh, with the continuation of module 1 uh, we are going to discuss about uh, steam generator so generation of the steam from the steam generator uh, we are going to discuss so first of all what is mean by steam generator as you know that uh, it is a device uh, where uh, the apparatus and to produce the steam the thermal energy is used by combustion of the fuel is transferred to water and which uh, vaporizes and gets uh, converted into steam at the desired temperature and pressure and it produces uh, steam is produced and for used for the so many applications so, for example uh, to produce a mechanical work by expanding the uh, steam engine or steam turbine and second one is heating and heating the residential and industrial buildings and it performs a certain process in sugar mills chemical and uh, textile industries so this boiler is also uh, one of the very important uh, role in power plant very basic uh, power, uh, system and thermal power plant and it is uh, uh, like a closed vessel in which the water is covered into steam and by application of heat so usually boilers are some coal or oil fire based uh, uh, boilers and uh, this boilers should fulfill the following requirements like safety accessibility capacity and efficiency so these are some of the basic uh, requirements so let us discuss about uh, classification boilers these uh, boilers are classified in various uh, uh, types one is horizontal vertical and inclined and fire tube and water tube boiler external air and internal fire boiler forced convection and natural convection boiler so higher pressure and low pressure boiler stationary and portable boiler single tube and multiple tube boilers so there are different uh, types of boilers are there so now in this syllabus only the first uh, circulation boiler we are going to discuss uh, for the under this first circulation the Benson boiler is comes under first circulation so let us will discuss about the Benson boiler so this Benson boiler it is a type of first uh, circulation boiler so where uh, uh, here uh, the combustion is taking over the bottom of the Benson boiler and uh, at the top the chimney is provided to take the exhaust gas out and blower uh, also provided and the hot air and combustion of the combustion chamber is there here and uh, feed water will be there for uh, the generating the steam uh, so economizer, convection and evaporator will be provided so as it is superheated steam getting that will be taken for the uh, expanding the mechanic work into electric work by taking the action of turbines okay this is all uh, Benson boiler so let us move on to the low <coughs> x boiler for the high pressure boiler okay so in this Velux boiler uh, again it is consist of compressor, gas turbine, exonomizer, water pump, uh, steam drum and fuel tank all this uh, are arranged uh, even the super heater also it is provided so this is the uh, Velux boiler so here we are expecting uh, the high pressure of the uh, high pressure boiler uh, means steam we are getting and advantage of this uh, boiler is very high combustion rate uh, are possible as 40 megajoules per meter cube of the combustion chamber volume and a low excess air is required as the pressurized air is used for the uh, boiler and the problem of uh, draft is going to be simplified and it is very compact a generator, a generating unit and it has higher flexibility so and it is also quickly start even though the separator has storage capacity about 10 percent of the maximum hourly output so this is about uh, boiler let us uh, uh, discuss about the uh, chimney so what do you mean by uh, chimney chimney is a uh, is one of the uh, system where uh, the exhaust uh, gas uh, or fuel gas are going to be taken out to the atmosphere so here there are uh, different types one is uh, four step let us will discuss about four step type of chimney so in four step system a blower is installed near um, the base of the boiler and air is going to be forced to pass through the furnace the flue economizer air preheater and uh, uh, 
uh, stack are going to be provided. Uh, this drop system is known also for, uh, called as the positive drop system or force drop system because the pressure of the air is throughout the system is above the atmosphere pressure and uh, air is forced to flow through the system. This arrangement is already uh, we are uh, pressing here. So here the bottom of the grate and uh, upper the furnace will be there and uh, blower is brought for the air and uh, once it is get the uh, uh, steam and uh, this economizer and air filter will be taken here and uh, through this stack or chimney the fuel gas will be taken out. So this stack or chimney is also used for system uh, but the function of this is discharge the gases at high atmosphere high in the atmosphere to prevent the contamination. It is not much significant for producing the drop therefore height of the chimney may not be very much in this the first dropped. So let us discuss about the next one. That is another one is induced draft. So in this system what happened the blower is located the near the base of the chimney but earlier case uh, it is uh, near to the furnace but here near to the uh, chimney itself uh, we are going to uh, locate it. So the air is sucked in the system is reducing uh, the pressure through the system below the atmosphere, the induced draft fan sucks the burner gases from the furnace and the pressure inside the furnace is reduced below the atmosphere and uh, induces the atmospheric air to flow through the furnace. The action of the induced draft is similar to the action of the chimney. The draft produces independent of the temperature of the hot gases therefore gas may be discharged as a cold as possible after converting as much as possible of the preheater. Okay, this is about the uh, induced uh, uh, draft. Next one, uh, types of cooling towers. So let us discuss about uh, what is mean by cooling tower and uh, cooling ponds. So, so cooling towers are the desired uh, when posture control on the temperature of the water is required. The space occupied by the cooling system is considerable uh, factor and plant is situated near the load center and far away from the adequate natural resources of cooling water. The rate of evaporation of the water in cooling tower and a subsequent of reduction in water temperature depends upon the following factors. First one is the amount of water surface area how much it is exposed. Second one is the time of exposure and third one is the relative velocity of the air passing through the droplets. So this is about the basic uh, uh, factors of the cooling water, cooling tower. So now uh, there are different types of cooling uh, towers are there. One is natural draft or atmospheric cooling towers, other is mechanical draft towers. In natural draft uh, cooling towers there are again three types. Uh, natural draft spray filled tower, natural draft pack type tower and hyperbolic cooling tower. So there are different types of towers and even the mechanical draft tower also categorized into two types. One is force draft and induced draft. In again induced draft there are two types uh, counter flow and cross flow. So let us discuss one by one. What do you mean by natural uh, draft spray filter tower. So in this case what happened uh, air is going to be enters through the lower side and the flows across the unit in a transverse direction. Okay, The air circulation through the tower depends upon the wind velocity. The capacity of this tower varies from 50 to 100 liters per minute per meter square of the base area depending upon the air velocity. And uh, these towers are used only for diesel plants and uh, where prevailing wind are not cut off by obstructions. This is not used for the high capacity thermal power plants as cooling range is limited. The wind losses are high and uh, there is no control over a outlet temperature of the water. So you can see in the sprinkles or spray at the top the water will uh, enter into the water. Here you can spray you are observing. So this spray is going to be taken over uh, this uh, tower. 
so air is uh, flowing so when going while well, uh, flowing uh, air uh, due to the wind uh, the velocity based on the velocity of the wind uh, it uh, takes the cool uh, cooling effect and uh, water can be uh, dropped uh, at the down so again it will be recirculation for the uh, further process okay so this is not used for high capacity as i told so only for the small capacities okay next let us discuss about the packed atmospheric type of cooling tower so packed construction how it is uh, taking place is the spray fill tower expect that winter distributing tough distributing the tough the fills the uh, used to helps to break the water into small droplets so in this tower also a flow of air is uh, uh, crosswise to flow the water these towers are also rarely used for the small uh, thermal power plants uh, as a original cost due to high requirement so pumping height required are high and towers extreme length and height and uh, narrow width require entering the to withstand the high winds so this is what all the for the uh, towers which extreme length and height and uh, narrow in that case we are going to use for the packed atmosphere okay so these are the packed means here you can observe the different uh, uh, here these are all black color we are seeing now these are all we call as packing so this that uh, through this uh, packing uh, the towers are also rarely used for the thermal power plants so let us discuss about the next one hyperbolic cooling tower so as you know that uh, the structure of hyperbola itself uh, this is usually you have seen this kind of uh, cooling tower in uh, somewhere in the power plant they are used for usually they are used for the hyperbolic cooling tower so this arrangement are uh, as shown in the figure it is uh, constructed by the steel reinforced concrete and mostly slag that is the empty space inside that and bottom is around 10 meter above air intake contains packing over a uh, which warm water flows so the shape of the stack and circular plan is hyperbolic in profile that's why we call it as hyperbolic cooling tower so the operation of this tower is much like that uh, only natural draft spray cooling towers with the hot water cascading over number of splash types filling through the uh, cooler air oh, so this is by by natural so due to the density difference uh, that water uh, air uh, molecules are taking away uh, and it will be taken out through the end of the uh, or at the top of the air outlet so this is about the hyperbolic cooling tower okay next uh, uh, first this first drop cooling uh, tower uh, arrangement uh, as is shown in figure so the fan is located at the base of the tower and the uh, air is uh, blown by the fan uh, up through the descending water the entertainment of the water is removed by the draft elevator at the top so these are all are arrangement by force means we are using by fan that's why we called as draft cooling tower okay let us see the next one induced draft cooling so what do you mean induced draft cooling so here uh, what happened the difference lies only in the supply of air so what if in this case what happened the fan is located at the top of the die tower and air enters to the lowers or located the tower side as uh, you have seen in the figure okay like this so and it is drawn up to the discharge through the fan and casing to the atmosphere such type of cooling towers made in the combustion of the fiberglass or sometimes pvc and stainless uh, steel uh, okay so this is about the induced draft so next uh, induced draft cross flow type of uh, towers so this are provides the horizontal air flow so you can see uh, this is a horizontal air flow in the both the sides here okay both the sides uh, tower in the form of small drops over a filling the fan is centered at the top of the unit 
so it draws the air through the cells that are paired to a suction chamber pertained between the fan okay uh, the drip telemeters uh, turn air towards outlet fan as uh, air leaves the water sprays so okay due to the density again uh, difference the water particles uh, air leaves the water sprays and outstanding the uh, feature of the tower and it is lower air static pressure losses as there is a less resistance in a air flow so this is about the cross flow tower okay next uh, uh, cooling pond okay so this cooling ponds are uh, very uh, is, uh, rarely used uh, uh, used in uh, so this spray uh, cooling pond is one of the simplest method of uh, cooling the uh, condenser uh, water uh, this hot water coming out from the condenser is spread through the nozzles which are uh, at the top okay uh, to expose the maximum surface area of the water to air for the effective cooling the spray ponds are surrounded with the wooden walls to prevent the wind from the carrying the water particles so uh, these are all uh, very uh, simple uh, uh, structures of uh, uh, cooling the uh, or condensing the steam okay so this also one of the principle uh, based on the evaporation of the water spread through the nozzle into the air above the its surface so once it is condensed and again it will be collected and uh, you are taken in back for the further process so this is all about the uh, cooling pond and all so we will see some more uh, slides in the next video